Hey guys, today we're going to talk about everything you need to know about boat trailer surge brakes. Let's get into it. You know, a lot of your modern boat trailers are going to have surge brakes equipped on the trailer. Some boat trailers are going to have electric brakes, but a majority of your boats under 25 feet are going to have surge brakes. So we're going to talk about surge brakes, help you understand them, and maybe understand a few pointers and tips and tricks. Right away you'll notice this trailer neck here is a surge brake. And the reason we call it a surge brake is because as we hit the brakes, the trailer wants to surge or slide forward on this neck here, on this uh, coupler. And this little pin location here slides aft. As the neck slides forward, that engages a solenoid inside here. It's gonna activate the brakes. It's gonna send a signal down to the brakes on the axle. Therefore, applying brakes gives you braking force on the trailer. We don't require an electrical signal to activate the brakes. It's called a surge brake. You may feel as you're slowing down sometimes a little clunk, or maybe when you're driving away from a red light, you'll feel a little clunk. That's this mechanism moving in and out. So we're gonna talk about today how to use this, uh, the wiring connections necessary, maybe a couple little tips and tricks. Right away, you'll notice right here on the side, a lot of people ask the question, what is this? Why did my trailer come with this? Well, this is a bypass for your brakes in case you want to back up into a driveway or you're backing down a boat ramp and you don't have the proper wiring connection such as your typical seven pin harness five pin that comes with the trailer uh, you can bypass your brakes using this key the key simply following the little rounded back edge here slides into this slot and then when the boat when the neck is pressed uh, in, in the reverse motion does not allow it to slide or engage the brakes. Some people have been frustrated by the fact that these things can fall out uh, because they're not really firmly secured in place. There's a couple little hacks you can use to fix this. What we'll do is we'll just get some tape. Any kind of tape will do. Come alongside and just tape it in place temporarily. This will ensure it doesn't fall out when you get ready to back up. Also, a couple little handy things we found online little device that has a magnet attached. We use these quite a lot here around the shop. Got a little magnet inside, same little profile that you saw on that previous device. Slides in, magnetizes, you don't need the tape. So this is a little bit more secure. Just don't forget this in place. When you get ready to leave and go trailer the boat down the road, don't forget this because you're gonna need your brakes. They're there for a safety reason. Help the vehicle slow down in an emergency situation. You need all the braking force you can get. So don't forget that. Standard connection that you're going to really need on your vehicle is one of these five pin style connectors or like on a big SUV, you're going to have this seven pin style connector and you align the tabs, they're going to connect like so. Then your connection from the trailer to the vehicle, you're going to align this uh, larger kind of black pin to the bottom exposed pin here. We'll slide it in. Some people use dielectric grease here just to protect it from getting water in it. Now we've got a good connection and we're gonna be able to back the trailer up without engaging the brakes because we have the proper electrical connection. However, you may find your vehicle might have more of the, the typical four pin connector, which does not include the brake bypass or the, uh, the little pin that gives the electrical current to the solenoid. So in that situation, you'd wanna do a little hack. I'm gonna tell you how to do this. Typical four pin adapter, it's gonna have three pins. It'll be absent of this pin. So the second pin in is the, the brown wire in the harness. You can't see it now because this wire is kind of all wrapped up. It's a brown wire that goes to your headlights. The fifth pin is a blue wire, and that blue wire is actually picking up power off of a standard five pin connection off of the reverse lights. So when we turn the reverse lights on, we put the vehicle in reverse. It sends a signal that tells the trailer, hey, we're backing up want to disengage the brakes now. If you don't have that, that uh, pin on your vehicle, connect the blue wire, which is this fifth pin, on the trailer's wiring harness to the second wire, which is the brown wire on your vehicle's wiring harness. Turn your headlights on. That's going to trick the trailer into thinking that you're in reverse. You can now back the vehicle up, back the trailer up, it's not gonna lock the brakes up on you. And once again, you only do this if you don't have one of these guys, or if you don't have one of these guys, and you're just kind of working in a, in a jam. For servicing, 
this little cap here we want to get in and check the fluids remove this top cap it's a protective cap it's a dust cap there's another access cap here this is going to be removed and then you'll pour in your brake fluid if you need servicing at this location check your owner's manual for more details on that another question we hear asked often is what is this cable for this cable is an emergency brake line uh, in case for some reason your trailer were to separate from your vehicle while towing down the road. You know, without this, if the trailer were to release and the vehicle just to keep on going, the trailer could roll for quite some distance. But with this in, engaged, uh, it's going to set the brakes in the emergency mode, especially going to pull the brakes. It will come to a stop uh, much more quickly. The way this works is when you get ready to hook your boat up to your, your vehicle, take this little guy here. What I like to do is come up underneath and hang it like so so it doesn't want to fall off. If you hang it the other way, there's a tendency for it to want to kind of come off this, off this way. Uh, but coming up from the underneath side like this, it has less of a tendency to do that. At least that's what I found has been successful for me over the years. Don't hang this off of a cable. Uh, don't hang it off of something on the trailer. Hang it specifically connected to the vehicle. In a situation where the vehicle is to separate from the trailer, it's going to pull this cable it's going to snatch it, it's going to lock the brakes, and it's going to lock them, unfortunately, and kind of permanently. It'll require some repair after the fact. Let's say that you disconnect the trailer, you put the jack down, crank it up, walk, you know, get ready to pull your vehicle away, and you forget to disconnect this cable. You drive away and you snatch this cable out. It is going to cause some damage, so be careful not to do that. Another pointer for your brakes. You gotta remember these trailers, although made to go in salt water, the brakes were not necessarily designed for salt water. So after you're done with using your vehicle in salt water, rinse off your wheels, rinse off your brakes, both on the outside as well as on the inside. If you do this, they're gonna have less likelihood of sticking on you or rusting prematurely on you. Super important. One final point, you know, most modern trucks and SUVs are going to have this seven pin adapter made really specifically to connect to trailers that have surge brakes, stuff like this. But if your vehicle doesn't have that connection and you want to have that added, you can do so. Just take your vehicle to a, a U-Haul location or something similar to that. They can get you connected. Now that you know everything you need to know about boat trailer surge brakes, you're really going to want to know about this.